This is a this is a great uh, show. Thank you so much. It's extraordinarily important. Uh, yes, and speaking of fire horses, I found out our newly elected state treasurer Fiona Ma is a fire horse as well. There you go. Yes. Yeah, so um, I'm here to talk about 5G, and I first of all I want to start with that I'm not a luddite. I support technology, but I distinguish I support safe technology. And to let you know that, um, interestingly enough, I'm now fighting against 5G and um, reckless wireless deployment across the nation. But in 1990-91, I actually had the first cellular phone store in Nevada County. I was selling the Motorola bag phones, and I was actually looking forward to the day that we'd have low-orbiting satellites. I was an adventurer, and I thought it'd be great if I ever broke my leg on a mountaintop. I could just get on my phone and call for help. I thought it'd be great. That was before I understood the health risks. So a couple of years ago, I got reelected again, second term on the city council for Nevada City. And Verizon came along knocking on our door, wanting to put eight cell antennas in downtown Nevada City on a restaurant called Fire Tux in our historic district. I fought against that because it just didn't fit our town or what we needed. And we had actually enough Verizon service there. But it was during this fight that I began to learn about the health implications. And I thought that really these are radio frequencies, what could be the danger? And it was not until just a couple years before when a smart meter was put onto my house again, knew it was coming, I had no concerns. It had been inst installed in my house, did not know this, and I started to immediately notice, with, this is with hindsight, that when I would go to sleep, if I heard the slightest little sound like my cat jumping on my bed, there would be a reverberation of sound, there'd be like an echo chamber that was so loud I would jump. I would actually jump in my bed. And I couldn't sleep, and I was having these echoing in my ears as I was sleeping. And when I first got my bill from PG&E, there was a graph that clearly showed when I woke up in the morning, my energy consumption would go up. When I leave for work, it'd go down. When I come back for lunch, my energy consumption would come up. When I would turn home, it'd come down. And here's this graph that you could easily see in all your PG&E bill when you can come into my house and take anything you wanted, when I'd be vulnerable, right? When I wouldn't be home, and I thought, I don't, want that. I don't want that graph out there in the public for you to see when I'm coming and going, waking up and when I'm going to sleep. It's nobody's business. So I want my smart meter removed from my house. It was removed. And as soon as it was removed, that echoing in my ears and that lack of sleep at nighttime immediately disappeared and has never returned since. That is when I realized that EMF sensitivity, electromagnetic frequency sensitivity is a real thing. But it went much, much further than that. So I began to fight against the Verizon cell tower, and along the way I began to educate myself. And I learned that this 5G, which is fifth generation, we had 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, now we're 5th G. 5th G is a whole range of different frequencies, right? These frequencies originated with the military. This is a military application. This is the type of frequency that they use for crowd control. This is what they use to actually cause cancers, create heart attacks, right? To even a terrorize a, a particular individual, depending upon the frequency. You can heal with frequencies and you can kill the frequencies. So when 5G came along, what happened was, and this was the doozy that caught my attention, is in the 1996 Telecommunication Act, 1996, how many of us knew about cell phones, right? And, and modems and, and the internet and, and the whole potential of wireless industry. It was, it was just in its infancy stage. But interestingly enough, in 1996, they basically said, look it, you as a deciding body, city council, supervisor, congressman, senator, you cannot make any decisions based upon health consequences. Period. That's a gag order. That would be equivalent to the auto industry coming to, to you and saying, okay, we've invented this car. But we cannot talk about the fact that speed kills. You cannot talk about harm reduction. You cannot talk about the need to add speed limits on the highways or seat belts or turn signals or brakes or, or airbags. You cannot discuss harm reduction and the harm that speeding down the highway can get you killed. You can't talk about it. If you do, you'll get sued. Since when is this American? That was my red flag that something was seriously wrong. So I began to fight against implementation of 5G. We had a bill last year in California called SB 649. To me, it was nothing more than just floating the idea out there to find out what the cracks were, right? What the loopholes were in what the FCC was planning. FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler two years ago basically announced that by 2020 we're going to have over 2 million small cells, which is 5G microwave radiating antennas up and down your neighborhoods and you have no ability to say no. These bills have now been passed, right? This legislation has been passed. FCC has forwarded this, this bill 
And right now, there looks like there may be a stay in the 10th appellate court, so we might be able to hold it off a little bit. In Nevada City, I've been working tirelessly to create what's called a telecom ordinance, right, to actually try to protect our residents and our businesses as much as possible. But it is not easy because basically anything that we had, any kind of standing we had last year has been eviscerated by the FCC in this last year. Right? They know what they're doing. The FCC is a hijacked industry. The FCC is also like the, de the World Health Organization and, 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 and the wireless industry, the telecom industry is actually, interestingly enough, the biggest lobbyist, more than petroleum, more than the, 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 the cigarette industry. They're the ones out there paying off our representatives more than any other industry. So that is what we are up against. So basically, the millimeter wave, just to let you know, right out of the gate, it penetrates your whole entire body. One of the things it does, and this is the most disturbing, is this is actually, what people ask, what is 5G? I, uh, 5G is a whole new world where they're going to actually create our physical reality and the virtual reality, and they're going to combine them into the Internet of Things, where basically everything you do, everywhere you go, you will be triangulated, and this hive mind will know. 5G actually, believe it or not, and this is through peer-reviewed studies, and there's thousands of peer-reviewed studies out there, by the way. Don't let anybody repeat the industry live. There's no studies. There's no confirmation. There's no, that is an industry lie. What 5G is, it literally takes your body, and it takes your sweat ducts, and it turns those sweat ducts, and the moisture it's pushing your skin into an antenna that will send out and receive information. Currently with the smart meters, you can literally opt out in your home. You cannot opt out right now. Elon Musk of Tesla is sending off 5G satellites every three days. They plan on bathing the whole entire planet with 5G and you cannot opt out. We will literally within a couple of years be in a wireless cage. I've spent the last 15 of my years of my life building local economy in Nevada City, creating the Nevada City Organic Farmers Market, getting onto solar, trying to support a local economy, our local farmers, our local industries, and I realize that everything that I've done is for nothing if 5G is put into place because it's going to eviscerate all the good that is on this planet. There's something called the Schumann's Resonance. Schumann's Resonance is a natural frequency of the planet. It has its own frequency, which is 7.83 hertz. Your alpha state is about 7.83 hertz as well. Studies have been done that if you are separated from that 5, 7.83 Schumann resonance, you will actually perish and die. You need that frequency like you need the water and the air. And what's happening is this 5G and all of these wireless technologies are interfering in that, in us receiving that resonance, right? Which means our health overall is, is going to fail. Interestingly enough, we have doctors and scientists out there who have also noted a correlation between gly glyphosates and wireless cell towers, upticks in cancer clusters. They've also noticed upticks in cancer clusters when you have high metals in your body and your water and your soils and you're consuming them and you have wireless, you'll have a, a higher case of, of cancers. In Nevada County, we have the highest rates of brain tumors in California. We also have an am amazing increase in reproductive organ uh, cancers, if many of you will note. We have many female residents in our county here, and the cancers are skyrocketing. We're talking 20, 30, 40-year-old women. It's actually very disconcerting. The Nation had an expose. One of their um, reporters in did an incredible job on how Americans are being war-gamed. This came from a Motorola internal memo from quite a few years ago that they're going to war-game Amer war Americans like the cigarette industry war-gamed Americans. And what that means is they're going to make sure that anybody out there criticizing wireless industry or the telecom industry is going to be discredited and shut down, whether they're a scientist or an activist. The other thing that they're going to do with war-gaming is they're going to make sure that they put out constant misinformation so as long as you don't know really what the truth is, they can keep getting away with it. And the last thing to be war-gamed is when they will place in, uh, people onto the World Health Organization, the FCC, right, the American Cancer Society, so you have industry insiders on these agencies, right, these ABC agencies that are supposed to protect you, and instead you've got the industry insiders on there protecting the industry. And that's what we're up against. It's huge. It's absolutely huge. So what do we do? Well, the first thing we do is we have to understand something, that we are bioelectric beings, right? We are frequency. We are frequency. It is impossible for this not to impact us. This impacts the birds, the bees, actually the healthy 
healthy germs and, and the, and the um, uh, 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 creatures in the soil. This affects the soil down to several inches, as a matter of fact, all right? This actually affects the water. This affects the trees. This affects the uh, migratory bir birds. They can't actually migrate. They can't find their ways, nor can the bees. This has an impact on everything from food production, right? And this is the biggest of all. Those who are most vulnerable are the unborn and the young, and this is why. <clears throat> when you're a child, when you're an infant, your cells are, are, are dividing and multiplying, right? So what that means is that as an adult, what took me 20 to 30 years to ultimately um, develop a cancer will take uh, a, teenager, a teenager five to 10 years. And when you give a cell phone or a tablet to a little five-year-old, it will take them two to three years to develop a cancer that would have taken me 20 or 30 years because those cells are multiplying so much faster. And the bones of their body, right, the tissues of their body are much more uh, able to absorb those frequencies than us as adults. So they're far more, far more vulnerable. So what we're seeing now, what was reserved for 65 years and older, what we are seeing now is a deadly brain tumor called the glioblastomas. Those were reserved for 65 years and older. The fastest growing segment of the population in America to get these glioblastomas are 20 to 29 year olds. Why? Because they've had cell phones to their heads now for 10 years. Now we have young teenagers starting at 12, 11, 12 years old, putting a cell phone in their pocket. The fastest growing rate of prostate cancer is between 15 to 19 year old boys because they've had their cell phone in their pocket for five years. We're going to see the same thing with younger, we're seeing, we're seeing children being born with leukemia, unheard of before, because their mother's been having tablets and, and, and cell phones and, and laptops, which are no longer called laptops. They're called personal computers because the industry caught on. If they say laptops, they're going to be vulnerable for, for radio frequency injury lawsuits, so they call them personal computers. But mothers with babies have putting their laptops and they're radiating their children. These microwaves are the exact same thing as a microwave in your oven. Same thing. So when you carry a phone around, you're actually carrying a microwave oven around with the door open 24-7. Think about that. So the best thing you can do is reduce your risk, and that's what this is all about. We're talking about risk reduction. I have a cell phone, but I only turn it on at certain times to check my messages, to, to check my, my um, answer, my recordings, any messages I have. I make sure to not put it in my pocket, to not put it on my beam, to not have it on me at any time. And this is very important, is to keep all of these wireless devices, and you just start one at a time, right? Is you try to reduce the wireless devices and those frequencies in your home at nighttime. Because at nighttime is when your melatonin is released, and that is when you get a good deep sleep, you can restore, and, and that melatonin is actually going out there and it's destroying those free radicals that your body has been making throughout the day. But if you have a wireless device like your um, Alexa or your cell phone or your little Apple watch next to you, you're not producing the melatonin. And you're doing that to the children, I can't tell you what you're doing. So start simple, turn your modem off at nighttime. And then once you get to that point, then you actually can turn the modem off good for good, plug in a good old fashioned ethernet, a little blue cord you used to have to your computer, plug it into your laptop, right? Make sure you remove all wireless devices around you. Get rid of your smart meter. And one of the biggest things is your good old fashioned cordless phone is one of the worst of all. Get rid of the cordless phone and go back to a good old fashioned plugged in phone. And um, lastly, I would say um, is just educate yourself. Go out there. There's thousands of peer-reviewed studies, hundreds of different websites. And if anybody tells you that microwave frequencies and 5G is safe, you have to understand that you're literally being lied to. And this is, and, and this is the, the, the industry's way of wargaming you. It's serious. Any questions? Yeah. Billy. Airplane mode is okay, but even then, airplane mode, even when your phone is off, it can turn on automatically and then start doing updates, by the way, so it's not 100%. Um, there are actually devices out there that you can put into. Um, there's even like Mylar, there's a type of kind of aluminum foil. Um, you use it on your insulation in your homes. You can actually make a little pocket out of that and put your phone into that. But you. And just to let you know, we just, and we're going to put it on YouTube, I'm trying to upload it. We were in a, an area where there's no other wireless devices anywhere near us. We were in a cabin out in the woods, and we actually, we YouTube this. I have my EMF uh, reader, an acoustometer. I said, okay, let's test the microwave. So we turned that microwave on, and it went all the way to the red range, as high as it could go, like you're standing under a, under a big old cell antenna, right? And I backed away from that microwave oven with the door closed 100 feet outside of the house, and it was still in a dangerous reading. 
a microwave oven 100 feet outside of the house. So folks, educate yourself, educate yourself, time is of the essence. Turned on, and then I yelled to the person in the house, turn it off, she turned it off, and it dropped right down again. Wow. This is of paramount importance. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.